different today or now. I'm going to show you an unboxing of Cataclysm. There's a couple of these on YouTube, but I always like to try to bring a Axis and Allies slant to it or comparison. So I'll try to uh, incorporate that. And it's going to maybe it's a unboxing plus because I also kind of want to go through board game geek and see what kind of files and things are out there as well. So it's actually sitting here in my Global 40 board because this is where we play games when we're not playing Global 40 as well. Um, but first I'm going to take a look at Board Game Geek because when I buy a game I kind of like to go there and see how games are reviewed, what kind of files are out there, what kind of activity there is on the forums. So it has a pretty high rating, 8 with 333 ratings, 170 comments. As you can see here, all the general information, how long it takes to play, complexity, and I've already selected it in my collection. There's quite a bit of ac recent activity. Of course, this game came out last year, 2018. Um, and there's already, you know, a lot of helpful information here. I always like to go to the files and see what kind of modifications or additional uh, helping aids and things like that that people have done. Here's, I guess, uh, is that Japanese rules if one needs. So this helps me decide if I want to buy a game as well. Um, there's some pretty good images here. So anyway, that's the board game geek view. And I printed out a couple of those files that we'll see later. Okay, well, let's get to the game. It's still in its shrink wrap. So I'm going to uh, take that off and I'll be back here in a second. Okay, that's done. And uh, just for reference here, actually, I paid uh, 80 bucks for this. So it's not a cheap or inexpensive game, but that's okay if it's quality. I don't mind paying for quality. I bought it at a local game store in Mountain View, California called Game Castle. I'll put the link. Great store. First time I've been there, probably six to eight thousand square feet, maybe a thousand feet of games and paints, and the rest is open uh, tables for play. So here we go. Cataclysm, Second World War, GMT, two thousand eighteen. Uh, William and Scott there designed it. it has two maps. It has a European map and a Pacific map that can be played together, from what I've read. Game skill, uh, 14 years up. You can read all that stuff or find it. I'm going to try and set up in this video as well. I'll set it up and show you is the solo play setup. Let's see what that looks like. And I'm going to give it a try as well, playing solo. Never played a solo board game before. Top off here. Okay, got the top off. I took the two hands. So here's the rules of play, rule book, playbook. One thing great about GMT, they provide these playbooks, and it shows you how. Basically, to play a game, and they often have designer notes, optional rules. So this playbook is, what are we, how many pages are we looking at here? 39 pages, 40 pages. One thing about GMT, they do a great rule book. This one is no exception. Good colors, good graphics, well laid out, um, bulleted. Easy to follow, more or less instructions. Just really, really well done. And um, but one thing they never put, and they don't do any one game books, are indices, which would be great if they did that. Here's the playbook. And it is, uh, how many pages is this? About 45, 50 pages. 55 pages. Overview of the counters. One thing I saw in another review too, they put, you know, they, it's very clear with flags for which um, 
faction. I gotta say, these, these maps and illustrations are great. I wish more game companies did that. So, pretty basic playbook that GMT does. Here are the player cards, one for each faction, US. And the way it works here is that uh, you commit across this, from what I've been reading, you have different commitment levels. And as you go up in commitment, it adjusts your effectiveness force pool, how many units you can deploy. Down here is your available force pool. That's where you can draw units from. And then, like historical board game 3639, it has a, some of these things take, take a couple turns to build, like capital, sh capital ships. And I think they are... Uh, I think the way it works is you have a basic fleet and then an upgraded fleet that's carriers. So you got France, United States, Japan, Italy, Germany. And the way this works too here is it tells you, you know, who's your who's your who your nemesis are. And that affects things like um, not morale, but I think effectiveness. Great Britain. So those are pretty good. There's on the back. There's historical references. These are sort of fascist special rules and some gameplay examples. So these would probably be like the sire blood blood bath rule cards. Again, well put together. Easy to follow. Great graphics, just quality. I guess you get something for 80 bucks. Here's the maps. They're, they're kind of small. I'm gonna pause here for a second, put the maps out on the board and see, see what they look like. Here's the board, uh, the uh, Europe side of the board unfolded out. And just for scale, I put the 1942 version 2 spring edition of Axis and Allies next to it so you can see. With all the cards, it's about the same height. Together, they're not huge, I would say, but you'll need some room. You'll need, a, you know, a normal dinner table should fit on there. And this is the Pacific side of the map. The two can be played together, kind of like Global 1940. And the way the map works is that these arrows mean that you can move between those areas. So C, C, D, D, D is down here. Pretty nice looking map. Interesting C zone distribution and connectors. These kind of uh, speckled areas are rough terrain and there are certain limitations on that. I think probably normal things like blitzing tanks and it also has to do with supply that you can trace the supply through some of these water, funky water areas. Okay so that's the, those are the two maps that come with it. I'm not totally thrilled with the paper map. This is pretty thin. This isn't even like cardboard. It's just paper paper. I could see downloading this from Vassal and printing a complete joined map um, at your local print store for probably 50 or 60 bucks. You can order this map printed on or glued to cardboard from GMT directly. But for that for like 30 or 40 bucks, but for that price, I would have it printed on vinyl or something at a local print store. But that's just me. Here's the counters. These don't look like they're typical NATO counters. They're more graphic, which I think I prefer. There's two sheets of these. There's sheet two. back 
more than that. More or less looks the same with some different, uh, yeah, not, not too much difference. This is a turn tracker and affecting this reserve. It also, this table up here tracks war between the nations. This is a stability track. If you reach collapse, you pretty much end the game, my understanding. There's a two years per turn track, victory point tracker, and you track also, I haven't read everything yet, but you track the, like the Nazis, the fascists, you track the democracies, and then you track the Cointern, the Soviets. So each one of them have their own uh, tracking as well. There's a crisis table chart, things happen at different points during the game. Some player aids. These open up. There's quite a bit of information on these. These blocks, this is a box of blocks, those are to designate ownership. They're like uh, the round L's in Axis and Allies. Some more dice for my collection. Okay, so that's the game. Looks pretty good. I think it's worth 80 bucks. This is something interesting I found on uh, Board Game Geek for fans of Man in the High Castle, that series about uh, Germany and Japan winning the war. It looks like there's someone's come up with a scenario for Man in the High Castle. An odds table chart someone has come up with as well. It's good to know the odds going into a battle. And then it looks like someone has updated these player aids. My printer didn't print too well. But it looks like it's the same as this holdout here. That comes with the game. Not sure why they would revise it, but I'll have to take a look at that to compare. Okay, that's it. So, Cataclysm, a Second World War by GMT Games. I'm going to set up the solo scenario, and I'll be back. All right, here we go. Um, so I said earlier that I was going to set up a solo scenario, but there really isn't a solo scenario. You just end up playing both sides. And what I'm setting up here is the 1933 to whenever, 45, 46, for two players. This is the setup out of the playbook. Not too many special rules, but it gives um, where you put units, how many offensives you start with, what units start in your force pool, etc. Here's how it looks on the map. So up here you have the U.S. of course in um, Hawaii and on the East Coast. Kind of similar to Axis and Allies, a fleet, which makes sense because it would be historical. But uh, the factories, there's not too much going on in the Pacific yet because it is early, 1933. The British get a special base. It's a, has an air base and a naval base. There's some supplies in Java or some uh, resources in Java. The Japanese have taken Manchuria already. The U.S., this green icon is the, is the U.S resource marker because they were still sending them oil and iron or steel then you have the civil war in China with uh, Mao and Chiang Kai-shek so you can see there's quite a bit of resources there those are one-time resource markers so if you capture those you get to use those these resource markers once the Russians are already uh, in China, as are the Germans, those, those uh, arrows are their offensive markers, and that's basically aid to those countries to try and get political influence. The Russians up here, of course, Mongolia, Xinjiang, then there's not too much going on down here, as, as I mentioned yet. Britain's already in Iraq and Jordan. Turkey's neutral, and these are minor, minor forces. 
Turkey has a one-time resource token as well. The Russians don't have too many troops yet defending their frontiers here. But um, they have a lot of infantry, of course, as usual, that they can deploy later in the game as they get more resources. And resources like in Axis and Allies helps you buy troops. Uh, Great Britain, France has not been taken yet, of course. Spain is not yet in their civil war, but that is a possibility in this game. Italy is pretty weak as well. They've already taken Albania. <clears throat> Looks like they have influence in Austria. And then Africa is pretty empty as well. These are the setup for the player cards. So again, there's the commitment across the top, which affects your resources and how many units you can deploy. Your force pool is this section down at the bottom where your available units are. And as you increase commitment, you increase instability in the country because people get tired of war, but you can deploy units faster and they cost less. So that conversion is how many resources you need to build one unit. And as I mentioned earlier, fleets take two turns to build as do fortresses. So when you build a fleet or a fortress, they go up here on this reserve column or actually they go here on the, sorry, the turn track. So if you were to build a, if France builds a fortress, where's France's, where's France? So they usually end up building a fortress that you would lay it out there for next turn. So next turn when that hits, then you can move that fortress to your production holding box down here, and then it can be deployed on the map. These flags are, it's an interesting system. You kind of go through rounds and rounds and these flags are basically kind of your movement and your power and they let you take actions political actions um, and you can pass and if you pass if all, if all players pass then you draw counters out of a cup and different things happen so you can have a civil war re uh, resolution so whatever civil wars are on the map you can have crisis just different events for crisis. Civil War starts. You have these home front, everybody gets a home front, and then you do like stability tests and effectiveness tests, things like that, when your home front gets chosen. I don't know the mechanics, all of it yet, but that's kind of how the game works. You go in these rounds, and when the round is done, when everybody's done moving, when everyone's done pulling their, uh, doing their home front tests, actions like you can attack you can do political influence if you fail there's consequences of failing in, in political influence when you move when you do things in uh, when you do events or political actions or offensives in countries that have interest in that area then those countries get more flags so flags let you do flags are powerful because they let you do different things so up in china you know when the japanese attack uh, the Soviets will get a flag, the Germans will get a flag, the Americans might get a flag because they have interest from the Philippines. So it's kind of this span of control, this regional influence. The Americans don't want the Japanese getting too powerful in China, etc. So you have to be careful when you do actions or uh, have offensives or have these political actions. Oftentimes, you, you give your opponents the ability to, to do more things. So again, these rounds keep going, going around in circles for a little bit. And the games, each turn can last, I think, you know, a good while because you have to uh, deplete all these actions and resources every turn. Um, earlier, I mentioned these rough areas. These rough areas, again, restrict armor bonuses and that are inside these means restricted terrain and that cancels line of supply so that's what that means that are and these fists are resistance so, so when you attack there they get modified die rolls so that's pretty interesting it's going to take a while to learn i'm already watching 
quite a few of the videos and there's a lot to it. Um, there's a lot to remember every round and uh, all these modifications, you know, each country has different um, modifiers and effects and the Soviets have this posture which affects quite a few things. You have to remember all your flags, special resources. The Americans get some different effects that nobody else does, etc. But, uh, oh yeah, there's one thing I was going to show. I think this game has the potential to have um, minis in it. So what if one were to put, uh, instead of the blocks, you know, replace them with some minis. I guess this the gall would go in the home country. You know, because uh, one thing you can have fighters and bombers because you can upgrade your basically your air force just to a strategic air force. Of course, we'd have the neutrals in here and uh, some navies. So I think that doesn't look too bad. I think that's a possibility. Maybe if I get a bigger map printed, it might be uh, kind of cool to play with. With the minis. All right, um, so t I'll maybe play a few games and come back with another view of this of Cataclysm. And if I do print out another map or do some modifications, let you know what those look like. Until then, take care.